Hi, everybody. My name is Matt Hampsey. I'm a park ranger with the New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park. The New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park is the world's only national park dedicated to a musical art form. That's jazz, of course. We're uh, here in New Orleans, the birthplace of jazz. At our park, we have educational programs about jazz history, the early history and the progression of this truly indigenous American musical art form. It's still progressing, too. Still progressing. <laughs> and we're thrilled today to present to you the inaugural Golden Hour. And, uh, of course, that is named for the, the sunlight in the <laughs> photographer uh, speak. But this is Golden Hour with Ricky V. Jones. We're thrilled today to have two-time Grammy Award winner, poet, songwriter, and rock star, Ricky <laughs> Lee Jones, joining us. Ricky Lee Jones, <laughs> thank, thank you, you for being here. What a wonderful introduction. Thank you. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. Let's play a song for them. So when I was thinking about uh, doing this, which first, thanks for inviting me to be the first one and be the test puppy uh, with the light and the wind. I was thinking um, about the last few months and everybody staying in and people doing their best to protect the more vulnerable population of which I'm, I am one. And, um, and uh, you know, I, I've been pretty good with it and then suddenly I'll feel depressed, useless, helpless. And I'm probably like everybody else and then, and then you get a little better. But in a way, I thought we're kind of at a crossroads, not in just, uh, not only because of the illness and the economic um, drain and the bewilderment we feel, but in the way we're going to decide to go forward. So let's do this amazing song called Crossroads. Do you know who wrote this song? I would assume it's Robert Johnson, but... Uh, That's right. Let's yeah. do a Robert Johnson okay. song. <laughs> That's right. I went down to the crossroad, fell down on my knee. Went down to the crossroad, I fell down on my knees. I said, Lord, won't you save me to do with me what you please? I went down to the crossroad, I'm trying to catch a ride. I went down to the crossroad and tried to catch a ride. Nobody seemed to know me. Everybody passed me by. That's right. the blues very often but that song kind of transcends the blues I think it does yeah. transcends it very well um, and so along this line of us 
trying to stay in. And, and when I drive around New Orleans, most of the people I see have masks on and, and gloves on, even inside their car. And uh, they're just ready for anything, I guess. And I'm so grateful because I myself would be in a, a little bit of trouble if I got sick. So uh, when I came out here, you can't see them, but all the crew are wearing masks and protecting me from, and I, and I have to take my mask off or I, I sound kind of funny when I say, but eh, it's a good time. We get to see the best of each other. And uh, we're also protecting our backside. That's, yeah, cause that's a hard thing. All right, what Push are we it. doing now? Is, do I need my guitar? Um, Fixing a hole. Uh, let's do that one. Let's do that one. This is a Beatles song. I was sitting around in my house, and when I'm not watching TV, I guess I'm fixing a hole. <laughs> Trying to make something better out of what I got. Are you there? Can you see me? Ah. <laughs> Fixing a hole where the rain gets in Stops my mind from wondering Where it will go And I'm feeling the cracks that ran through the door And kept my mind from wondering where it will go I guess it really won't matter if I'm wrong I'm right where I belong I'm right where I belong you see the people standing there they worry me but never ask me why they don't get past my door Filling the cracks in a colorful way to where my mind goes wondering there I will go. go. Oh, I hit that note so well before. <laughs> Doesn't matter if I'm wrong, I'm right. Where I belong, I'm right. Where I belong. See people standing there, they worry me, but never ask me why they won't get past my door. I'm taking the time for a number of things that weren't important yesterday. And I still go. I'm fixing a hole. I'm fixing a hole. I'm fixing a hole. Yeah. Like that we sometimes. Were, when we were practicing yesterday, the robins came. I, we were sitting on my porch and singing, and, and the robins came to see what the music was about. It was pretty cool. They started singing at us and actually came under the, the porch. The birds like the music, eh? Yeah, they're drawn to your singing, I believe. Ah. <laughs> so it turns out this is not only the golden hour for uh, photographers, it's a golden hour for robins. And songbirds. So. Is, uh, is there anything you want to tell them while I run and get my guitar? Do you have a yeah. message about the parks, maybe? Yeah, I'll, I'll set this up while you get your guitar. So one of the things I, I wanted to ask Ricky Lee Jones was if she had any special national park experience or a, a favorite national park oh. or any kind of story at all. <laughs> uh, and I heard a little bit. I didn't hear yeah, it yeah. all. And it, uh, so I'd like to ask you if you wouldn't mind sharing a, uh, 
a national park experience that stands uh, out in your mind. A national park experience from 1969. When I was four, 15, I ran away from home um, in 69 and 70. Oh, this is from 1970. And I ran away to a cave in Big Sur National Park. The cave was um, above Salmon Creek, which I think is on the south side of the park. And there I lived for a month in the cave with many other hippies. There was a triple Scorpio guy who wore, only wore a robe, and um, I think he was part of the Children of Light. And there were many, there were some New Jersey people who came through, Mario and Dee Dee. I still remember their names. He used to pick out all his eyelashes. And there was a beautiful 16-year-old from uh, Newport Beach. And her parents came up to, she'd run away, but when she went back home, her parents came up to see the cave. So, uh, and then there were some people from Detroit uh, who came and they were uh, dressed really nice. They weren't really dressed in cave apparel. One of them was jumping from um, boulder to boulder and he slipped between the boulders and fell down and um, I was the second person down, and it looked like he was dying. He'd hit his head pretty badly, and he'd wake up and go to sleep. And I sat there singing to him for an hour um, till the uh, ranger could come and carry him out. And I always thought that he died. So cut to about eight or ten years ago, where I tell this story to somebody, and the guy says, that was my cousin. That was my cousin. He went to Big Sur, and he fell and hit his head. He didn't die. He's fine. So that's an amazing and unlikely end to the story. And the other thing about Big Sur was um, that has the Esalon Institute there, and at the, I don't know about now. I don't know if they could change it much because it's built right on the cliffs of, of California, but it's possibly the most dramatic of all the parks. And they're all extraordinary. Nisqually Delta in Washington and anywhere you go, w what a majestic country we live in. Wasn't it Roosevelt, Teddy Roosevelt, who created the parks to protect, I think so, to protect Well, he was definitely uh, created a, uh, quite a few of them. Yeah. Plus, he created the teddy bear. Yeah. Well, he didn't. He actually killed him, but he, they, they, that's another story. But I like him for, for the parks that he created. And um, as much as we can do, if I could add this to protect them, because some of them they've opened up to logging for Weyerhaeuser in Washington or to um, cattle in Yellowstone. And, and I don't object to it, except that um, once people begin to make a profit out of the public land, then soon it won't be the public land anymore. So you got to watch out for that kind of thing. Well, I know my favorite thing to do in life is to visit national parks. And, yeah. Um, I didn't even, growing up, I didn't even know about the National Park Service. Would you tell us about, I've been wanting to go on the nature walk that's like eight miles outside of New Orleans. Will you tell us a little bit about what Certainly. there is around here? Yeah, so there's, if you're uh, living in New Orleans metro area and you want to go on a uh, nature walk, there's the Barataria Preserve. It's, it's closed at the moment because the trails are only about four feet wide. So just check up on the uh, website, Jean Lafitte National Historical Park and Preserve. Okay. It's the managing, manages the Barataria Preserve. And they have about eight miles of, of boardwalk trails to where you can see all the different habitats in South Louisiana. So walk along a bayou, bottomland hard hardwood forest. So it's oh, a wonderful a place. Yeah. Here. Huh. And about a month ago, the uh, wild irises were in bloom. So it was, it's beautiful. Yeah. Uh, it's really, it's a really, uh, great place to see lots of critters too lots of birds lots of uh, reptiles lots of snakes from a safe distance yeah yeah so we got a lot of reptiles here in Louisiana here in New Orleans those little tiny lizards that make the red thing and they see their mate yeah you know what they're called a lot of them are called anoles a-n-o-l-e ah. anoles which um, aren't necessarily native to here but those are uh yeah, I, I've noticed increased numbers in my backyard this so year. So how do you think they got here, these anoles? Well, my former 
colleague, uh, Bruce Sunpie Barnes, who's, he retired about five years ago. He said they uh, hitchhiked uh, <laughs> some here, somehow here. And, um, but there are some ind indigenous lizards here. But he, he was the one that I relied on to uh, be able to recite all the different animals and critters out there at the Barry Terry Preserve. That was his specialty. So, but it's a great place. Yeah. Of course, we all also have New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park, which is in the French Quarter. Also and, indigenous. Yes, also indigenous. And that's where I've worked uh, for quite a while. And instead of um, protecting and telling people about the uh, wildlife and fauna at New Orleans Jazz, we, we tell people about our local musicians. And uh -huh. those are why we were, uh, why our park is created. So if you come visit our park, in normal times, um, we have local musicians performing and talking and about their music and why they play and who influenced them. It's kind of passing passing it down. Matt, is that the Louis Armstrong Park? No, it's no. Um, we have two locations where we do programs. One is at the our visitor center, which is in the French Market, 916 oh. North Peter Street, and then also at the New Orleans Jazz Museum. Okay. So that's our partner who's also uh, showing this uh, live stream today as well. Um, Thank you for showing the live stream today. Yes, indeed. I can't believe the Park Service is doing this music for us. What's next on our list? Just wondered. For our Canadian friends. I would say you want to do hello in there? Or you want to say that to later? Let's do Chucky's in Love. Okay. First. Give you a fair warning here. Yep. Um, ready, here we go. How come he don't come and he up here with me? Down there at the meter no more. How come he turn off his TV? And he hangs a sign on his door. Call and we call. How come we say? What could make a boy behave that way? He learned all of the lines every time And he don't stutter when he talks And it's true, it's true He said that a choir cool and inspired Sort of jazz when he walks Where's his jacket, his old blue jeans This ain't healthy, this is so clean I think that Chucky This is something I have to see. Is he here? Why don't you look in the pool hall? Is he here? Go look in the drugstore. Is he here? No, he don't come here no more. Tell you what, I saw him sitting behind us at the Pantages. And whatever it is that he's got up his sleeve, I hope it wasn't contagious. What's her name? Is that her there? Christ, I think he can comb his hair. Uh, is that her? What's her name? Oh, we'll never be the that's not her, I know what's wrong Cause Chucky's in love with the little girls Singing this song Don't you know that Chucky's in love Chucky's in love oh, oh. Chucky's in love Chucky's in love Chuck is in love, Chuck is in love, Chuck is in love, Chuck is in love with me. 
ready? song <laughs> oh. <laughs> so was it worth the wait definitely worth the wait yes was yes, there a question did you have for me you want to ask me a question oh i can't i mean i can now that you say that now this is only visible to the person who wrote it <laughs> Wrong Maybe thing to read. Anyway, <laughs> All right, good. I can feel you guys out there. I'm glad you're here. It's my first, uh, you know, virtual show. It's actually a real show. I've been wanting to do it this way a long time because if you'll come to your computer, then I don't have to travel out to your town, which is so expensive and difficult. Well, I think if we give the shade a little bit more time to catch up with this in the golden hour, we might yeah. be able to see some of the live comments coming in. In the meantime, I have uh, one more question, if you'd yes, humor sir. me. All right. I know with New Orleans musicians, life has been turned upside down mm -hmm. with uh, gigs and tours being scheduled. Yeah. And I understand that you had a tour yeah. that was scheduled for the, the, uh, for the summer. Uh, where are you right now? I had a tour scheduled for April, and um, so that would have already been going on May and Europe in the summer. It was, you know, <laughs> poor me. But I don't have any money stored up at all, so um, thank you for paying me for this gig. But uh, it's hard on us, you know, and, and uh, I feel I can get, you know, if I'm being honest, I can get this small business loan that's going to help me. Hopefully until the time comes when I can um, tour again or do something that generates money, but it's hard. Nevertheless, what a gift I get to give, you know, what a get, gift I get to have to be able to sing. So I still get to do my job. I'm just not making any money. And um, I don't know why that's not freaking me out. I, it probably will freak me out eventually, but I'm, I have enough to pay rent. Next month, we'll figure out how to do it again. It'd be great if some really rich people made a little bit of money, you know, put a little money aside for for, for all the rest of us who didn't put a little money aside. But even if they don't, you know, the people will, I believe the people will keep us working and find a way to help us. I know you've been a huge gift to your neighborhood by singing <laughs> whether it's just to the birds or the passers-by yeah. um, I know when I got to step outside the house it was the first time in a month I'd have been anywhere yeah I went one time to Costco and I got enough groceries to last for so I wouldn't have to go out for a while so it's it's been great to just being around music again isn't it interesting to not be able to do exactly what you want to do when you want to do it it's um and, and in a funny way, it's bringing out the best in us, you know. And not that I don't want to be able to do exactly what I want to do. when I, But I have to get up early to go shopping. And, and the restrictions are, you know, I'm realizing that, that it doesn't matter if I can't do what I want to do exactly when I want to do it. It's, it's okay. Life goes on. Let's do this John Prine song. It's called Hello In There. And... Um, you, many of you may know it already, and if you don't know it, how lucky I am to be the one to play it for you first. the key. 
kids have grown life of their own and they left us alone John and Mary live in Omaha Bill is somewhere on the road We lost Davy in the Korean War And I still don't know what for It don't matter anymore You know that old trees just grow stronger and old rivers get wilder every day but old people that just get lonesome waiting for someone to say hello in there Sits and stares out the back doors. All the news just repeats itself like some forgotten dream that we both see. Someday I go and call up Rudy. See, we work together at the factory what could I say when he asks what's new nothing what's with you nothing much to do you know the old trees just get stronger the old river gets wilder just get lonesome waiting for someone to say hello in there hello so if you're walking down the street one day you spot some hollowed ancient eyes Don't just walk by like you didn't care, like they ain't there. Say hello in there, hello. That was beautiful. A fly flew in my eye. I know this may be a difficult question for you to answer, but... What did John Prine and his music mean to you? Ah, you know, right after Chucky's in Love, I got to meet and hang around with a lot of interesting people, and uh, John Prine was one of them. We spent a few weeks together. I I went to his shows. He wore one of my blouses, or maybe it was a jacket. But it was a girl's thing. and He's so cool. He's wearing a girl's jacket on stage. But his music I first heard back when I was 16 years old, living in Olympia, Washington. And um, um, his music and John Pro who were the three I listened to? Randy Newman came later. John Prine, he was the guy. And... Um, I know I'm free. Oh, and uh, Neil Young. Those are the those are the two main people I listen to, and Laura Nero. And so, um, you know, I wasn't very interested in folky music. And um, whenever a person is genius, they transcend their genre. So Hank Williams speaks to me, and he was he was a great American voice. Not that there are not old people all over the world, and that then and then the meaning of the thing translates 
to the whole world, but his experience is uniquely American, and through that American experience speaks to the whole wide world. And the writers who do that are, are the ones I carry around with me. And, and I know people probably know he passed away last month from this terrible virus. He had conquered cancer a long time ago and then conquered it again. And he was so resilient and he would not stop. He has, you know, there are dates right now that are still up on the, his website. He, had, he was a nonstop working guy, married guy, lovely guy. He was from Illinois. I was also from Chicago and we, we had that in common. I think he worked down there at the folk city or yeah it's this school this folk school where I play a lot I'm not sure sorry maybe somebody will tell us the name but um so we we had this thing in common of being hillbillies in Chicago the unwanted uh the unwanted so I was you know I haven't seen him or talked to him in a millennium but I was still devastated in a personal way that that uh that he died, that he succumbed to this virus, you know. In the same week that Hal Wilner, another brilliant producer and musician and writer, passed away, and, and lots of others, too. When I listen to John Prine's music, his lyrics are like poetry to me. Yeah. And um, when I listen to your music, especially some of the, your... your um, records during the 1980s there's a lot of poetry in that yeah. and you also write poets you poems and uh, a poet yourself i wanted to ask what's the similarity between crafting a song and writing a poem to you with a with a song you have to say what you have to say really quickly um you've got about eight lines to tell them why they're listening and what they have to look forward to in the bridge <laughs> you know so it's um it's a whole other um uh, poetry and prose are almost visceral you know you can really love the sound of your voice and keep carving it but a song you got you have to get to the point really quickly and the beatles did it best of all those songs back in the 60s are two and a half minutes and they've are, and in the two and a half minutes they've repeated it three times so they said it right away right yeah. so yeah, songs, sh uh, and Bob Dylan did a totally other thing. You know, he brought in the seven and eight minute song, which is also wonderful, but I prefer the traditional form. Would you like to hear a traditional form? Sure. This is called A Tree on Allen Ford. I think it was on um, maybe a, a record called Traffic from Paradise, but I'm not sure anymore. Let me just tune up one second, okay? I'm sorry. Pretend to tune up. Oh, well, we'll be gypsies. Looking back at me Love by someone Love by someone Love by someone Love by someone 
of the nature of this. It's just that we are all part of everything that will ever exist. To be loved is why we come. Every drop of rain that ever falls is always falling on and on. Baby, you come in me. Mm, and now we'll always be. There's nothing that's ever been that isn't loved by someone who waits to be loved again. Thank you. Why, that hurt my fingers. That's such a beautiful yet sorrowful song. Mm -hmm. I, I, I love it, it though. I why is it sorrowful? I guess the, the child had died there. And yet, life goes on, right? Well, it was a true story. There was this tree next to my daughter's school. Every day I'd drive by, and there'd be new flowers all year long. So I said, what's the story with this tree? And somebody said, um, a few years ago, a girl was, either she died there in a car accident or she would liked the tree. I wasn't really sure, but I was so moved at the devotion of the person who, who brought flowers every day to it. And I thought, you know, it's sad, but I see somebody loved. I see the tree is loved, the, the girl is loved, and I look by and I love the mother, and uh, my love is as everywhere being generated everywhere so that's why i have to find something it is sad but i listen to that song it does give me hope ah. yeah yeah thank you so uh do you guys have any questions what do you want to know about us here's the golden hour this we is got the a little hour. early now we know mm. my Thanks. screen isn't on so i actually can't uh, respond to anybody but um do we have another song before we, um, did we run out? Oh, Cycles. That's cycles. It. But before we do that, sad, another sad song, maybe we can talk to some of the people out there in the world. I want to say hello to all my friends in New Orleans. 
who are um, Barry, Mary, and to my friend Lexi, and um, and uh, and all the people from Facebook who are watching today. Hi. Are we still uh, singing stuff? Come on, baby, do you want to go? There it is. Oh, come on. Baby, do you Back to that living life today. My home. Let's see. So, no, all in. I can't see any messages. So, if you show me where they are, then I can say something to somebody. I think this is free. Don't pay. That's what I see. <laughs> this is free. Don't pay. What's that say? Probably next time, you know, they'll have somebody reading these and then prompting the people. But, but we got to learn as we go, right? So. All right. There you are scrolling. All right. So we got Ricky. Please say hi to the UK. Hello to the UK. I got a couple friends in the UK. In fact, um, Sweden, Denmark. Australia, the UK, and um, Cycles is great. Yeah, we're going to do Cycles later. Thank you very much. Thanks for, thanks for coming and listening to Matt, the park ranger who is a killer guitar player. And um, <laughs> we're going to do, I think, was there 27 other people are watching me with Michael Hennessy and Ellen. Cool. How did I get the, you know, the bruise is all over. Did you have any more questions for me? Or are we all done with questions? I could always think of more questions Let's for you. Let's think of another question for me. There you go, babe. So the reason I came to New Orleans is because I was living in Los Angeles where nothing like this happens. And I have a few friends in Los Angeles. Hello to my friends in Los Angeles. But in the musical world, it was just impossible to get people to gather f without wanting to get paid. That's just the bottom line. And as um, soon as I came here, that sounds kind of mean, huh? But it's, but it's true. As soon as I came here, I, I began to sing in my own house again, to have fun singing by myself and, and come around and meet other people and remember why I love doing it. You know, so. And I know this isn't the first time you've lived in New yeah, Orleans. Yeah. Um, are there any characters? Uh, oh, that's right. I lived here <laughs> in 19. Or mu musicians that, that uh, you definitely got to know during the first 81 stint. or 82, 83, I lived on Decatur Street. And um, Dr. John is who sent me here with phone numbers to call and people to meet. And two of the people I met were James Booker and and uh, Professor Longhair. James played at a little tiny place in the French Quarter, and I'd get up late in the day, drink a whiskey, and walk down there and watch him play. And we became friends, and um, we like we both like doing my funny Valentine. And, and then I also got to go see um, Professor Longhair's final last uh, recording session, which was very exciting. And um, so I, I have a rich history here, though I haven't, you know, stayed anywhere for very long. This is one of the places I live. Well, we love having you. I'm so glad to be back. You know, when we were practicing out on my porch, there were people walking by, waving, smiling, bowing. It was pre it was really cool. It's a great place to live. All ages too, right? And they were just saying thank you, thank thank you for spreading some joy from oh. the front porch. So it was 
Be a That's cool. That's very cool. Um, so I want you guys to hang in there. It's I've. I could be wrong, but I feel like we're over one of the big humps of, of what we've gone through in the last few months of adjusting to a different way of being and, and uh, keep looking for ways to spread it around and you'll find them and, and you'll make the world better for, for doing it. This is a song that was on a record that I think I did in the early 90s, maybe. <laughs> I don't remember what records they were on anymore. But it's a beautiful song that Frank Sinatra had a little hit with, you know, maybe his only little hit. In the 60s, it's called Cycles. So I'm down, so I'm out. Are many others? So I feel like trying to hide my head beneath these covers. Life is like the seasons, and after winter comes the spring. So I think I'll stay a while, see what tomorrow brings. I've been told and I believe life is meant for living. And even when my chips are low, there's still some left for giving. I've been many places, maybe not as far as you. So I think I'll stay a while, see if some dreams come true. There isn't much that I've learned. Except the life keeps running in cycles. First there's laughter, then there's tears. But I keep my head up high, although I'm kind of tired. Old man up and left last week. And then Friday I got fired. You know, it's almost funny. Things can get worse than now. But I'll keep on trying to sing. Just don't ask me how. Boy, I should have the name of the writer of that, but I. Beautiful she was song. so good, but I can't remember. So I must admit, I'm more familiar with songs that you've written. I've got yeah. to uh, learn th that because um, yeah, as you assign it to me. But I was interested when you perform or sing a song that you didn't write. Yeah. What do you look for in a song? Yeah. What does it What does it take for a song to one that make it yours? I've always done other people's songs since the very beginning, and um, that's a wonderful question. But I don't know if I have an answer. I I. I can embody any song. Um, it's kind of like acting, but it's obviously it's not acting, but I just know how to become the character of the song and feel what the writer felt and find my way. Because I guess I love feeling the song, so I find my way into it and, and uh, 
and once I decide to do it, it's mine. Maybe even more so than the ones I write, because the ones I write, I have a duty to, I, I kind of do them this one way. Mm. This is how I wrote it. That's how I do it. But somebody else's tune I can interpret anyway. And um, that's not totally true, because I do reinterpret my own songs too. But yeah, I don't know what I look for, but but um, probably a great melody, if I thought about it, a great melody first. Because uh, my one and only love is an extraordinary melody, yeah. but I found the, the, the lyrics to be <laughs> cumbersome. And I had to work hard to decide I meant what this lyricist, I mean what that lyricist wrote. And because it just wasn't a way I would ever speak. Yeah. But once I made the transition, I, I went, okay, I can be, I can be that, whatever it is. I found he was kind of hokey, but he was just lost in, uh, in romantic, physical love, and, and he couldn't help it, yeah. I guess. You fill my eager heart with such desire. Every kiss sets my soul on fire. I give myself in sweet surrender, my one and only love. Oh, don't make me say that. But once I did, and uh, I can, I'm gonna learn. I'm gonna meet that guy. Yeah, that's a great jazz standard. I, I think of it as a jazz standard. Yeah, too. we were thinking of doing some jazz, but I didn't learn that one in time. So, but maybe we'll get to do it again, eh? Looking forward to. Um, Getting some other musicians together when this is all over, and we can go with the, to the jazz museum or yeah. perhaps the park and have some fun. I wanted to just tell people, uh, I'm sure they've noticed you in your park hat and park outfit, how incredible it is to play with really great players who have other jobs and, and you know, for whatever reason didn't follow um, music as the way to make money. and working in the park department and doing all that great work that you do for other people and then learning to play the guitar so well that I'm comfortable playing with you. It's a pretty great gift. Oh, thank you. That's and a high thank compliment you. coming from you. Well, I mean it, though. Yeah, I picked the, the perfect park for me. The uh, New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park is all about music, and so I'm surrounded around it by it every day. In fact, I came to work at New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park by way of the city of New Orleans. Not the, not the city itself, the, the train. Back in 1988, 1999, Park had hired um, Alvin Batiste, a great um, New Orleans uh, teacher and clarinet player, to write a script to tell the story of the progression of jazz music from New Orleans to Chicago. And so we did uh, this musical skit with Rose and uh, songs and period pieces on the train, on the train uh -huh. in the sightseeing car and if you've ever been aboard the city of new orleans the tracks are really old so you're always lurching back and forth so the biggest challenge wasn't whether we were going to play together or sound good it was just staying upright yeah, yeah i took a nosedive many a times oh. but it was so much fun you're driving you're ride, riding the rails from new orleans sh chicago and going through the heartland of so much American musical history, um, talking about uh, Delta Blues and the musicians from New Orleans that left and some of the ones that decided to stay behind. Of course, most famous being Louis Armstrong. So that was my introduction to the National Park Service. And, uh, Did so Louis thankful leave or stay behind? He, le he left. He left. He, uh, Joseph King Oliver, who left before him, he sent for Louis Armstrong to come join his band in Chicago. And uh, he never returned to live. Um, his mother uh, sent him packing on the train with a fish sandwich in a, in a bag and nothing, not a whole lot else. And How old was he, do you think? He was still a teenager. Uh -huh. I don't, yeah. He was, How uh, exciting that must have been to be, you know, you never know when you're making a memory. How exciting it must have been to be creating a new kind of, music and eventually a new America because of that music and that great spirit. He was kind of an ambassador for us. He was kind of an ambassador. Absolute uh, ambassador. Yeah. yeah. He lit the world on fire with it. Yeah. So you want to check to see if we have any last questions uh, from our audience here? They look pretty good. Uh, yeah. Will you? Uh, let me see. 
my own lip gloss too. Hello, New York. Collaboration, some nice blues. Any chance for, please say UK. UK, love you, love you, love you. I love you, UK. Okay. Let's see. Um, hi from London. I'm so glad you guys are watching around the world. This is Matt. Cycles was great. I don't see any questions. Just a lot of see me in October. So right now I'm booked to go play in Florida in August. It's a risky thing, although I got to tell you, the governor of Florida seems determined to open it up. Maybe it'll I be on the beach. Yeah, I was asking if we could ask the promoters if we couldn't do these shows outside, you know. So we're going to have to, if we go forward with gathering, we're going to have to find another way to do it. And uh, I'm excited to play for people, but I don't want them or us or anyone to regret coming out. So maybe I'll see you in Florida in August. And, and if things resume, hallelujah, I'll see you in October. But otherwise come to Facebook. I'm going to play in a couple weeks. I'm going to I'm going to, you know, play my music in my living room with my dog. And uh, I'll keep doing it. Maybe make rent, maybe. And we'll we'll keep learning how to do it this way, this new way till we can come back and be together again. Thanks for coming to the first golden hour. Thanks for having me. Ricky Lee Jones, it has been a distinct pleasure on behalf of New Orleans Jazz National Historical Park and all your fans and viewers, thank you, thank you for spending an hour with us. Thank, thank you so you. much. Bye, you guys everybody. come back for the next golden hour.